Even for SpaceX, taking Starship to the Moon and Mars won't be easy. The challenge isn't just in developing new technologies like orbital refueling or reusable boosters, it's in mastering the simple yet perilous act of landing a skyscraper-sized rocket on an alien world. The Moon and Mars offer no launch towers, no concrete pads, no margin for error. A single misstep could topple a mission that's been years in the making. For all the headlines about Starship's engines, fuel tanks, and heat shield, one of its most daunting hurdles comes down to something deceptively simple, where and how it stands. Elon Musk has long pushed to eliminate landing legs for Earth recoveries, arguing that they add unnecessary mass and mechanical complexity. But on the Moon and Mars, the calculus changes. A vehicle that can't catch itself must find another way to stay upright amid craters, dust, and unpredictable terrain. That tension has sparked years of debate inside and outside SpaceX. Will Starship rely on traditional landing legs after all? Or has the company found a different way to meet one of spaceflight's oldest challenges? The answers are beginning to take shape both in design documents and at test sites across Texas. Catching a moving rocket with a launch tower still feels surreal even after seeing it happen. The so-called Mechazilla system at Starbase has become one of the most striking examples of SpaceX's engineering ambition. But for all its spectacle, it raises an obvious question about the company's ultimate goal. What happens when Starship tries to land on the Moon or Mars? There, there's no concrete pad, no steel tower waiting to cradle the vehicle. Lunar and Martian surfaces are rough, unpredictable, and covered in dust and rock. Any rocket hoping to touch down safely will need to stand on its own. That's where landing legs come in. SpaceX already has deep experience in this area. The Falcon 9's carbon fiber and aluminum honeycomb legs have proven themselves hundreds of times both on land and at sea. But scaling that approach to Starship is an entirely different challenge. Starship HLS, the version designed for lunar missions, is vastly larger and heavier. Instead of four lightweight legs, it will likely require six made from high-strength stainless steel. The trade-off is obvious more mass. Every extra kilogram devoted to structure is one less for fuel or payload. Engineers are still studying just how many legs Starship will need. Some designs suggest six others perhaps eight. The reason is stability. Unlike the drone ships that Falcon 9 lands on the moon offers no guarantee of a flat surface. Craters slopes and loose regolith make even a small tilt risky. With a vehicle nearly 50 meters tall, a few degrees of imbalance could prove disastrous. More legs help distribute the load, but they also add complexity. Each one must deploy lock and retract flawlessly. A single jammed hinge could end a mission. And because there's no ground crew on the Moon or Mars, every operation must be autonomous and fail-safe. Then there's the problem of the engines themselves. The Raptor engines are incredibly powerful. We've already seen them pulverize a reinforced concrete pad in Texas. On the Moon, where there's no atmosphere to slow debris, Plumes could blast rocks and dust directly into the vehicle's stainless steel skin or into sensors or even ricochet into the engine bells themselves. All of this highlights one of SpaceX's biggest hurdles with Starship HLS. The company can design towers to catch rockets on Earth, but beyond it, Starship will have to catch itself. Landing on the Moon and Mars isn't optional for Elon Musk's long-term vision of a multi-planetary future, it's essential. That makes solving the landing challenge one of SpaceX's highest priorities. Adding landing legs comes with an unavoidable cost. More structure means more mass. But SpaceX seems willing to accept that trade. For missions beyond Earth stability and crew safety outweigh almost everything else, Engineers are already looking for ways to minimize the penalty, 
advanced materials like the same high-strength stainless steel that forms Starship's body can keep the system robust without adding too much weight. Smart mechanical design will play a part, too. One concept under consideration is a telescoping leg design. In this approach, the legs remain folded tightly against the vehicle during flight, then extend outward and downward in the final seconds before landing much like a collapsing spyglass snapping open. Another idea involves crush cores, essentially built-in shock absorbers. They're designed to deform slightly on impact, soaking up the final jolt of touchdown and protecting the vehicle's structure from excessive stress. Back on Earth, SpaceX can take advantage of its Mechazilla Tower and rapid reuse philosophy. Even if lunar or Martian missions carry less payload per flight, faster turnaround times, and lower overall launch costs can balance the equation over the long term. And it's worth noting, not every starship will have to make the return trip. NASA's Human Landing System version, for example, is expected to serve as a one-way lunar lander. That gives engineers more flexibility. They can afford to make the legs heavier, stronger, and more specialized for the moon, since they don't have to worry about bringing that extra mass home. To keep Starship upright during touchdown, SpaceX has been experimenting with deploying several widely spaced landing legs that fold neatly against the rocket's body during ascent, then swing outward and lock into place just before landing. The retractable design serves a dual purpose. It protects the legs from the blast of superheated plasma during re-entry and keeps the vehicle's exterior smooth and aerodynamic during flight. At the base of each leg, small actuators initiate the deployment sequence. These devices nudge the telescoping assemblies outward, allowing them to slide and lock into position with precision. What remains uncertain is exactly which kind of actuator SpaceX will settle on. Early concepts considered using high-pressure helium to power pneumatic actuators similar in spirit to the system that drives Falcon 9's smaller landing legs. In principle, it's simple and lightweight. But in practice, scaling that approach to Starship's enormous mass and lunar landing requirements isn't realistic. The forces involved are far greater, and helium-powered mechanisms would likely lack the strength and redundancy such missions demand. Hydraulics have also been on the table. They're robust and can absorb hard impacts or compensate for uneven terrain qualities well-suited for rough lunar or Martian surfaces. The trade-off, however, is complexity and risk. A single leak or ruptured line in vacuum could cripple the system, and repairs wouldn't be an option 400,000 kilometers from Earth. That leaves one increasingly promising path, electromechanical actuators. This approach aligns with SpaceX's broader trend toward electrification, borrowing concepts from Tesla's vehicle technology. Electric motors offer precise control, consistent reliability, and eliminate the need for consumable gases. They're also far easier to monitor and maintain across multiple flights. Alongside these actuators, engineers are likely to integrate shock-absorbing components, crush cores, as said, or other energy-damping systems to cushion Starship's landings on rough terrain. Together, these mechanisms represent one of the spacecraft's most intricate engineering challenges, a landing system that's compact, durable, and smart enough to handle worlds without runways. To help guide Starship safely to the surface, SpaceX plans to rely on an array of cameras and sensors that will allow the vehicle to effectively see its landing site. These instruments will scan the terrain in real time, identifying hazards like boulders, craters, and steep slopes before touchdown. The goal is simple. Find the safest, flattest spot possible and avoid the kind of surprises that could turn a routine landing into a mission-ending accident. One of the biggest concerns for any lunar landing is the power of the rocket's own engines. The Raptor engines are immensely powerful, more than capable of blasting loose rocks and dust upward with enough force to damage the vehicle or nearby equipment. 
To counter this, SpaceX's lunar variant of Starship will use a clever workaround. Rather than firing its main Raptors all the way to the surface, the spacecraft will switch to smaller thrusters, mounted higher on the body near the nose. These engines provide the final braking impulse, keeping the exhaust plume far from the lunar ground and minimizing the risk of regolith being thrown back into the vehicle. The same principle will eventually extend to Mars, though the environment there introduces a new set of challenges. The thinner atmosphere means dust and debris will behave differently, still dangerous but somewhat more predictable. Engineers expect the risks to be manageable, especially with experience gained from early lunar missions. At this point, one question naturally arises if landing on legs presents such a major engineering challenge, has SpaceX considered doing away with them altogether, as it turns out the company has? During a Flight 10 webcast earlier this year, an attempt ultimately scrubbed due to weather, SpaceX spokesperson Dan Huot offered an intriguing comment about future Mars missions. They're just going to put minimally viable landers on the surface land, right on the skirt, no landing legs, he said. The remark was later cited in Space.com's coverage following the successful Flight 10 test. It's an idea that sounds bold, but not entirely unrealistic. The Moon's gravity is roughly one-sixth that of Earth's meaning Starship would weigh dramatically less there. That reduction opens the door to the possibility of landing directly on its base, the broad stainless steel skirt that houses the engines without the added mass and complexity of a traditional leg system. Engineers have also floated other creative concepts. One involves using small thrusters to stabilize the vehicle during the final seconds of descent, while another explores deploying prefabricated landing pads ahead of time to create a smoother touchdown zone. All of these remain under study, and none have yet proven more practical than the simplest solution, sturdy, extendable landing legs. Even in weaker gravity, the moon's surface is unpredictable. A broad base can help, but a set of well-designed legs still provides the best insurance against a slow tip-over that could end a mission in seconds. So how about you? Either legs or not leg, which one do you like better? Let me know in the comments section below. SpaceX isn't standing still on the landing leg issue. Ground testing of Starship's landing systems is expected to begin within the next year, possibly by late 2025 or early 2026. These trials will be crucial to validating the structural integrity deployment mechanisms and shock absorption systems before any lunar flight demonstrations can proceed. With NASA's Artemis III mission on the horizon, the timeline puts considerable pressure on SpaceX to move quickly. In early September, close observers noticed something new taking shape at SpaceX's McGregor facility in Texas, the same site where Raptor engines are manufactured and tested. 